In this problem, we are given the following two equations, and we're also told that a load consistence of a 480 watt resistor is in parallel with a 5 over 9 microfarad capacitor, and this is connected across the terminals of a sinusoidal voltage source, and this is our voltage source. We were asked a couple of different questions, and we need to find all of them. First, we were asked what is the average power absorbed or delivered by our load. In the notes linked below the like button, we can find this formula. And we're not going to use this one because this is if we have a current and we have a voltage here. So instead of using current, we are going to use the first formula and the RMS formula for it. I'm going to move this up here and we can see that we need the VRMS, which is why we need to look for this formula because this formula will give us the VRMS. We know that our VM is equivalent to this. This is going to be our max voltage. So we can plug this in here. This will be 240. And then we can divide this in a calculator. And this will give us approximately 170. Now this is our VRMS. And we can plug this into the first equation that we are given up here. If we do that, we are going to have 170 squared divided by our resistance. And we are told in our formula that our resistance is 480 watts. So this is going to be in our denominator. And this will give us approximately 60 watts. So the answer for part A is going to be 60 watts of power. Next we're asked what is the reactive power absorbed or delivered by the load? In the notes we also have this formula that we are going to be using. We know our Vm, however we don't know our I of M. But we can easily solve for this by making a diagram of what we're given. So we're told that we have a 480 watt resistor in parallel with this capacitor. So we're going to draw that out first. This is our resistor, and then this will be our capacitor. We know our resistor is 480 watts, and our capacitor is given in microfarads. However, we need to convert this into capacitance reactance so that we can actually solve for this. Capacitance reactance is in the notes linked below. Uh, it's found in section 9.4, I think, but uh, it's VI relationship for a capacitor. And this is going to give us that our X of C is equal to a negative J over our omega times C. Our omega is 5000 and our C is 5 over 9 microfarads. So when we plug this into a calculator, it's going to be negative 1 divided by 5000 times 5 divided by 9 times 10 to the negative 6 power because that's what micro is for. And this is going to give us negative 360. So our answer for our X of C is going to be negative J 360 and we can plug this in for our capacitor right here. If we keep reading the problem, it is connected across the terminals of a sinusoidal voltage. So that means we're going to have two terminals right here and then we're going to have a voltage across it. And our voltage is going to be equal to 240 with an angle of zero degrees. We can see that we don't have a theta in here, so we can write that it is a zero degrees. And if we wanted to write this in rectangular form, it would just be 240 plus zero J, or just 240. And that is our diagram. Now we need to find current. If our source current is going this way, we can see that it's going to split between here and here, because these two impedances are in parallel. So this we can call our I total, and we know that our I total is equivalent to the current going through the capacitor and the current going through the resistor. And we also know that this voltage is going to be the same because it's in parallel and voltage is the same throughout like parallel uh, impedances. So to find this, we're going to use Ohm's law. It's going to be 240 over our resistor. Our first resistor is the 480. And then our next um, impedance, not resistor, it's, I mean impedance, um, is going to be negative J360. So we're going to have 240 divided by negative J360. And that is going to give us our I of total. If you're confused about why this J is a positive instead of a negative, it's if we take this negative J and we flip it, whenever we flip a J, it's going to be negative. So this is basically going to be a negative times a negative J. This gives us a positive J. Now, this is our I total. However, we can't solve it in this form. However, this isn't the form we need. This is the rectangular form. But we have an I max right here and our I theta right here. So we're going to need to find the polar form for it. To do that, it's just Vm is equal to the square root of our real number squared 
plus our imaginary number squared. And then we have the theta is equal to tangent of negative one with inside of it, our imaginary number divided by our real number. And that's going to give us these two values for our answer. Now we can start plugging it into this equation right here. We know that our V max is the 240 that's given to us. And this is going to be over two. And this is multiplied by our I of max. And we know that our I max is 0 0.83. And this is being multiplied by the sine with the theta for our voltage. And we know that's zero minus the theta for our current. And the theta for our current is 53.13. And we can plug this in here and then plug this into a calculator. And this is going to give us negative 80. And that is going to be the answer for our Q. So we're going to have negative 80 VAR. Next, we are asked, what is the peak value of the instantaneous power delivered by the source? And since it's delivered, we already know this is going to be a negative. So whatever our answer is, it has to have a negative in front of it, even if we don't get a negative out of it. We're looking for P max and P min. And this is actually given to us right here when we start writing this problem. So we're going to just plug in these values. The first thing that we know is our P average. It's given to us up here and that's 60 volts. So we're going to have 60 plus the square root and then we need to find our P. We don't know our P yet, so we'll solve for that in a second. But we do know our Q, and our Q is a negative 80. So we're gonna have a negative 80, and this is squared. Now we need to find our P. This formula is also in the notes below the like button, and we are going to use this to solve for our power. Now we know our VM to be 240. So we're going to plug this in here. We're gonna say 240 times our I max, which we know to be 0 0.83. And this is being multiplied by the cosine, of the angle of our voltage, which is zero, minus the angle of our current, which is 53.13. And cool fact, this power formula is the same thing as this Q formula. The only thing that's switched is the sine and cosine. So while our Q has cosine, I'm sorry, while our Q has sine, our P for power has cosine, it's the only difference. If we plug this into a calculator, we're going to see that this gives us 60. So that is our power. It's the same as our power average, which is pretty cool. So if we plug this into our square root, we're gonna have a 60 squared in here. And this is going to give us 160. So we can plug this in here. Remember, we have a negative already in here. So our answer is going to be negative 160 watts. Next, we are asked, what is the peak value of the instantaneous power absorbed by the source? So whatever answer we get here, it's going to be a positive. If we get a negative, we just have to make it a positive. And our P minimum equation is this right here. It's kind of the same thing as our P max. The only thing that's different is it's going from a positive right here to a negative right here. So we can reuse this exact equation, except we're gonna take out this positive and just have a negative here. And instead of 160, we are going to get a negative 40 as our answer. But remember, this is absorbed. So it's going to be a positive 40. So our answer for part D is 40. Next, we're asked what is the power factor of our load and also what is the reactive factor of our load? These two formulas can also be found in the notes below the like button and we're gonna solve for a P of F first. Well, what we have here for our angle of V, we know to be zero degrees. And for the angle of I, we found this to be 53.13 degrees. And then we are going to use these same angles in this equation because the equations are the same, the only thing that switches is the cosine to sine. And if we plug this into a calculator, we're gonna get approximately 0.6 for the power factor, and approximately negative 0.8 for the reactive factor. And that's how you would go about solving this problem. If you want more introduction to circuit analysis, there's a playlist and notes that cover the entire coursework in the description below the like button. And if you have any questions on the material, you can always leave them in the comments below.